Welcome back to the Tap Room Exclusive. I'm Dean Zarbo. I'm sitting here with Jim Waltz and Jay Demigal uh, for City Brewery. Uh, we are on to the Palm de Tom. Did I get that name right? Got it. So go into the name a little bit. What, how, so Palm de Tom, what is this beer? How'd the name come about? Well, the, the, the Palm de Tom is um, it's a Saison. And one of the things about, our, about the, uh, the brewery is uh, we're located on, a, on an 1865 beer garden that was built by um, immigrants from the Alsace region of France. Oh, wow. So it borders Germany. Um, it's a wine making region and whatnot. So, um, I know that a lot of uh, like our Belgian beers and the saisons and whatnot, we kind of feel a connection with the, the you know the place that we're living at here. Um, and and Pom de Tom is um, is highlighting Jim's skills uh, with barrel aging. You know he's got a, a background in distilling whiskey um, and uh, in brewing beer. Uh, we have a really good relationship with Tom's Floor. We're out in Chagrin Falls, Ohio. They're amazing. Uh, amazing whiskeys and bourbons and they do an applejack uh bourbon oh nice which is a bourbon made out of um uh cider oh, so nice. we barrel aged the saison in the applejack uh barrel which you know palm means uh apple in french and tom is tom's fullery so it's an apple tom's apple there you go and that's how we kind of came up with it. i'll let you jim talk about the beer and so for someone who might be unfamiliar with saison talk a little bit you know more about the about the Saison style. Yeah, so the the yeast are what really drives a lot of the character to them. So saisons, um, you can generally start off with just kind of traditional the, the cloviness of, mm-hmm. the, of the taste, and it's, it's got that 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 smell to it. Um, some of the the lighter saisons will have a banana kind of smell with it, but the clove is the main driver in a lot of it. Saisons then can kind of go wherever, where you can kind of get into the. Um, the farmhouse style saisons that get a little funky mm-hmm. with, with like you know with like the bread and some of the other things you can add to it. Those are those are from a, a, a bacterial culture, okay. Versus like the yeast culture driven. So if you just kind of went for a saison, and then your your again your banana your clove is is what's going to be the primary one, and then from there the styles of the saison will determine kind of where it goes gotcha um for this one this was the first time we made this beer again um we get barrels in I, any excuse for me to get a barrel i'm always i'm yeah. always good for barrels um barrels barrels are fun because you know they add a different level a different character to your beer um you know obviously bourbon is the one everyone kind of gets used to but i remember uh, there years ago when i was living in north carolina um, there's a brewery in Denmark called McKellar mm. and they're, they do a lot of cool creative stuff and they did a, they did a beer. I think it was just a breakfast out, but they put it in, I want to say four, maybe five different barrels, oh, the wow. same beer. So they had a Chardonnay barrel, a Cabernet barrel, a tequila barrel, Jeez. a rum barrel and a bourbon barrel. Wow. And I, you know, my first thought was. You know, it's a it was a cool experiment to see the different things that each barrel imparts onto the same beer, right? Yeah. So you kind of have your control of your beer, and everything changes. And then on the other side, it's the laziest way to make five different beers. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. how cool is that? That yeah. you just got five different beers by making one beer, right? right? So, um, but any chance you can get to kind of get something outside of just bourbon? We kind of know what bourbon gives you. Right. You've tasted it enough mm-hmm. and different different beers especially when they're too heavy in certain yeah and and that's really what you're getting at so you know if you can get a port barrel a wine barrel um a corn whiskey barrel we happen to get applejack barrels which is really you know different something different you know something kind of really in part because i mean your base your base for bourbon is going to kind of just be corn Mm -hmm. right that's what's that's the mash you know 51 percent or more corn in it so the barrel has to be really give a lot of character to it because there's not a lot of character in what you begin with. Right. Um, when you start off with ciders and other different things that, you know, apple bases and things you're going to distill with, you're actually getting a more flavorful base to put into the barrel. So the barrel doesn't have to do as much work in providing, you know, all that flavor and stuff. So so for for us, like the Saison was kind of a a cool style to kind of barrel age with. So uh, this one is a, is a little maltier than I would say like a, a traditional saison, um, because I wanted to give it 
a little more meat okay. for when it goes into a barrel. Yeah. Because, you know, barrels still have a heavy char to them. I mean, they're a number five char. Um, you know, your wine barrels are toasted. Mm-hmm. Your whiskey barrels are charred, you know. Okay. So th- there's a, it's a heavier, um, heavier character than what a wine barrel would give you. So with Saison, it's kind of being lighter. So on this one, we ended up, um, it's got, it has a Maris base, but then it's got like some little roasted barley and some little more like uh, caramelized um, specialty malts mm-hmm. in it to kind of give it a little bit. So when the barrel ages it, it's going to also impart a little bit of color mm-hmm. into it because that's kind of what carbon does and the wood will, will draw it in. But you don't want it to overpower the beer. Right. You know, you want it to complement the beer but not overpower the beer. So... Uh, again, this one is a um, a higher gravity, so it's like nine point seven percent on the ABV, um, and that just allows the same thing with barrel aged stuff. You kind of when it's sitting for a month or two or whatever, it's kind of got to need a little alcohol, kind of acts as um, a preservative in a way, yeah. just to kind of age it age it up. So uh, you know, high gravity beers are great for barrel aging for that respect. But then, um, so this one, we were real happy with the way it turned out. I mean, you still kind of get the, the characters of it, of a, of a, of a Saison. Yeah. It's got the clovey character Absolutely. to it, but it's also got a little bit of that, uh, multi, a little bit extra maltiness than a normal Saison to it with a little sweetness, which complements apples yeah. <laughs> you know, and apple Absolutely. whiskey and stuff like yeah, that. It's got too. that like finish. Like you, I, you really get the apple on that finish. Yeah. And, and so you, when you use a barrel, you, um, you want to when you, you know when you put say it's barrel aged, you want someone to know it's been in a barrel. Yeah, but then you want someone to know it hasn't been in a barrel too long. Right. So it's just you know getting the right time and tasting it and being able to pull it out where you get what you want to out of a barrel. Yeah. But then not have it overtake your beer and, and kind of just be too much of a barrel. And sometimes you know it, it, the finish on a barrel age is you sometimes get too much. Uh, this is is nice because it complements the everything else, and then it it doesn't have the heat mm-hmm. to it. The apple really kind of, I feel, at least in my opinion, cuts the cuts the heat out a little. Yeah, bit. That, that 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 that's your balance between your alcohol and your sweetness. You know, if you have if you have a high alcohol, um, in a very dry, you know, kind of like you think about champagne, mm-hmm. like a, a dry champagne. You 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 get that cut, yeah. You, you, uh, the sharpness, yeah, absolutely, of, of a champagne where that that's where sugar's your friend in in that sense. So when you're using your malts um, to kind of leave a little bit of sweetness on there, yeah. Um, now that you're trying to make a Jolly Rancher right type beer, but you're just trying to add something that kind of tones it out. And and again, like every every goal of every beer is just about making a balanced beer, you know. So yeah. one part kind of complements the other part to it. This is a, this is really nice. I don't. Uh, I'm still new to like saisons and getting out there. But it's one of those things where uh, I've talked about it before. Just because I haven't had them doesn't mean I don't try them. Sure. Because you know, I hear you know people swear off styles and stuff, and it's like you know, just find something. You know, there's there's levels. I tell and, you what. I mean, that's that's that, that's what flights are for. You know, and, and you know, when, when I was in the wine industry, my favorite favorite thing was always when people would talk about Chardonnay. Mm-hmm. There's a hundred different ways to make a Chardonnay. So right. people are like, I don't like Chardonnay. It's like, no, you just don't like a style of it. Yeah. You know, maybe you don't like that it's got. I don't like oak. Right. I like so, unoaked Chardonnay. So you could have stainless stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some people like the butteriness with the malolac, you know. Yeah. And there, there are styles to it. But, you know. To to me, when you know, we have to do a lot of beer festivals, right? Uh, absolutely. And so it, for us, it's cool because we get to go around and try everyone's different beer. Yeah. Um, you know, and see everybody. But it, I, I probably go to I probably go to beer tastings a little different than how normal just enthusiasts would yeah. go to, because you know, a lot of people like to go drink what they like to drink and mm-hmm. then drink a lot of it. Mm-hmm. You know, we get and there's to, nothing wrong with and that. we get to go and it's like we get to investigate styles, right. see different things that are trying and and. If there's a certain style I don't like, if I see it, I, I want to try it because I'll be surprised how many times, you know, that brewery, oh, man, they did it right. Yeah. And it's you all know about what it's approach. supposed to taste like. You know what I mean? So then you're talking to them and you think, so, you know, tastings to me are the time that that's where you really get to 
maybe you don't like it or maybe it's just that beer that brewery that yeah. what you've had to had to try with it, it happens but i mean there's definitely it's it's such a subjective thing that some things just won't agree with, with your taste yeah. buds and that's kind of what it is but that's but until you've tried enough yeah yeah I, I, you'd be really really surprised i have an example i went to um when we lived in north carolina there was before all the big uh, craft breweries made it to Asheville, before like Dale's came and for um, all those ones came in, um, there was a bunch of small little breweries down there. And there was a little small brewery uh, called Wedge Brewery in Asheville. It's a phenomenal brewery. And first time I went in there, just kind of asked the bartender, you know, what's good, what's new? And she's like, we have this uh, raspberry Russian stout. I heard raspberry and I kind of checked out. Yeah. You just, yeah, my, just my fruit thing. Right. I'm just checking out. I'm but, there with you. But, but, but she was like, Oh no, it's, it's really good. I said, well, I'll, let me try it. Blown away. Blown away. Yeah. How good this was. I mean, it was like a dessert just to get down to the beer and then yeah. drink the beer. And then, so it really kind of, again, changed. I had an opinion and it totally changed my opinion. You get some fruit beers that say it's got apples, say it's got this. Right. And it is, it's candy. And then you try these other beers that it's like, oh no, they fermented it right. And it was done, it was done right. Yeah. So it kind of took away my prejudice against like, if I see a fruit beer, you know, I, I used to roll my eyes at a fruit mm -hmm. beer, but, but it's like, you know, you come across these ones that, you, you know, you try, you're open to trying um, different styles to it and you're just really surprised. So it's, it's you know, it's not to get scared away by seeing certain keywords in, yeah. in certain beers you yeah. know like i saw a thing on the internet the other day somebody made a lucky charms beer yeah i don't know about <laughs> yeah. i would try it before i judged it right it's just kind of like you kind of sometimes but you know it's there are a lot of other flavor profiles that you can put in beer and get out of beer and just but i guess as long as they're balanced and they're complementary it can make really yeah. really cool styles with, with well, different beers that's why stuff. i like about the uh the, the passport that destination mm -hmm. cleveland did it is it gets you out to try places you might not have gotten to before and then in that you also get to try beers you might not have gotten to try before styles that you might not got because it's like here other than right now when you guys got four ipas on you guys don't necessarily focus on ipas and right. that's and that's good for people to come out and try something new and expand uh expand your taste buds because you know as as you age, your tastes change. Oh, sure. And, you know, like <laughs> where I, right. I'm nowhere near where I was six months ago. Sure. And I, I really like just telling people, get out there, try new stuff, and see where you are. Like with people who don't like IPAs, maybe it's the hop that you don't like. Sure. Or the bitterness. Right. Maybe try a New England. Right. You know, and I've found people who like are now like, oh, do you have a new New England? Uh, you know, exactly. They want to try new New Englands now. Exactly. And yeah, stuff it, like it, that. It's it's a it, it's nice because right. I mean, there's so many categories of beers and styles, but then there's so many subcategories to those styles individually. Absolutely. You know, where it's just kind of like it gets insane. And like I said, I mean, there's you know each each brewer just has their own has their style. Mm -hmm. So again, I mean, we could all brew an IPA, use the same ingredients, and they're going to come out very different right. just based on that. So. But, you know, flights to me are, are a great way to get introduced to a, a, a brewery's beer selection. Yeah. And, you know, to kind of go through and really see, the you know, the variety of what they go through. And you, sometimes you'd be surprised. I mean, there's a lot of when we've done some uh, tastings for some other things. And, you know, we've had p people really be like, this is not my kind of beer. Or one I would just generally go for or approach. Right. But we gave it to them in a tasting flight for a sampling. When, and they were just blown away by it. So it's like, oh, so it's cool when you can kind of change somebody's perspective Absolutely. On, on, on something. It's just kind of like, um, you know, you kind of know you're doing something. But, again, it's so subjective. It's just 100 percent to each is to each his own. Yeah. Right? But but it is it is cool when you get into different styles. And, you know, like the Saison, I mean, our beer system's big enough that it's big enough to support the brewery but it's also our pilot system at the yeah, same time absolutely so when we brew stuff with it you know you're kind of always like i think it's good but you don't know till we you know we put we don't have a, like a brewer's tap that we're always kind of like testing mm -hmm. you know we, we try but um but but with the saison and you know with our different barrel aged beers you know it's just something fun to do and you know we try to maybe do styles that aren't necessarily always barrel aged right you know so someone kind of like oh 
a saison in a you know you know barrel, but it's not a bourbon barrel. Right. You know, it's trying to find and the right pairing of barrels for styles of beer. I, I could be totally ignorant on this, and that and that's on me. But saisons normally more blondish in color, or can they be this like more ambery like yours is? Is that, uh, is that a no, result a, of the malt? Uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Barrel. Yeah. A little bit of both. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We used we used a more um, caramelized like malt bill. Yeah. So like your farmhouse saisons are like, I mean they're going to be your hazier kind of blonder mm-hmm. blonder style ones. Um, you can add a little bit of darkness to it. This one, this one, I purposely made it a little more to the light amberish yeah. side, just to give it that sweetness. Okay. In it. And knowing that it's going going in a barrel, right? For, you know what I mean, right, right. So, so yeah, so, but it, it, like you said, it it kind of balances out that nearly ten percent alcohol right. that, that's in in the saison. Um, so yeah, so those are all just decisions we make when we're creating a recipe. Nice, kind of thinking about um, what type of what type of specialty malts we we want in to kind of what kind of finish we want, and you know, kind of hope a cool beer comes out of it absolutely you know? uh anything else you guys want to get out about the uh palm de tom before uh, we head out for next week um yeah not on the palm de tom but we we're, we're kind of just along the lines of the barrel aging program as we 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 kind of always keep a rotation of barrels coming in from tom's foolery and uh, some other of the wineries we get in from time to time so uh, the goal is to always have at least one of our barrel aged beers go on a uh, tree monster was our big a big hit for us we were approached by inside tree to do a beer for them so I did a uh, Imperial Brown Ale. Ooh, nice. Um, we put it in. We put it into a, uh, a a maple bourbon barrel from Bissell Maple Farm out in Ashtabula. Oh wow! So we brewed the Imperial Brown um, with maple syrup, and then we barrel aged it in a maple. Oh, in, wow. in a bourbon barrel that had maple syrup aged yeah. in it. So those are styles that we do too. That that, that came out that came out really good too. Nice. So um, yeah, so we have like corn whiskey barrels. We have our bourbon barrels. So. It's just kind of something to be on the lookout for when you come in. Um, right now, the Saison's on tap. Um, next time you come in, there'll probably be a different, yeah. you know, barrel age, something going on all the time. So uh, this one was a good experiment, it, it, one of those positive experiments. So we'll be looking forward to, you know, making it again when the season rolls around. Very cool. Jim, Jay, thank you again for your time. Tune in next week for another all-new episode here at Forest City Brewery.